I have uh, post-traumatic stress from serving in the service. And, uh, I need to be in a quiet place with a lot, without a lot of stress. I chose this as my sanctuary in life. It is really frustrating to me that after working so hard for over 30 years to build something nice that it is compromised by the possibility of PFAS chemicals in the well. Let down, overwhelmed, betrayed, um, forgotten. They knew about it, even in the 70s, that they knew they were doing something they shouldn't do. To get that letter in the mail six months after he passed away, and then to start my research on what PFOS causes pancreatic cancer, thyroid issues, and then to go back through his history and just think, oh my gosh. Wife died, you know, cancer. Whether it was related to water, who knows. It feels like they're ignoring us or pushing us out of their way. What's going on? It's important to us and for our health. Am I doing the right things to keep my family safe? How many years have we been drinking that water as well as the livestock on the farm here? I, I worry about my new grandbaby that's here on the farm, uh, my son, his wife. I'm concerned. What are the effects that are so unknown? You know, I can't bring Larry back and I can't bring my mom back, but hopefully through the stories, and all that we're doing that this can stop. We have to stand up and try to hold our electeds and the agencies accountable to fix this problem. Water's the new gold. And our gold is rotten. Hello, my name is John Hancock. My neighbors and I organized the West Plains Water Coalition. Our purpose is to understand and educate the community about the threat of PFAS contamination in our groundwater and in our wells. To begin this discussion, we need to understand a bit about the hydrology of the West Plains. Let's meet Dr. Chad Pritchard of Eastern Washington University. I've been working in the West Plains for hydrogeology and geology for about the last 12 years. We don't really know a lot about the older rocks around here. Um, but that younger geology is about 16 million year old basalt, flood basalt. So it'd be like Hawaii, the big island of Hawaii with the lava flows flowing everywhere. That's what's really important in the West Plains, uh, especially for groundwater aquifers, is, is, are those basalt layers, the lava flows that came out. About 16,000 years ago were the most recent Missoula floods, um, where we had catastrophic flooding from uh, Montana and possibly from, Can from Canada as well, um, rushing to our area into the Columbia River Valley and, and, and scouring out all of eastern Washington. The amount of erosion that just took away material, forming valleys and coolies, and, and then all of a sudden at the very end of it was the deposition of sand and gravel. Um, so when you start talking about how water works in the geology, um, that basalt, the water flows very slowly. Whereas in the sand and gravel, the water can flow much faster through the ground. And so there's kind of these two different a dichotomy of, of, of aquifers in our area, which makes it really fascinating to work with. The West Plains are high ground above the Spokane River and the Spokane Valley Raftrum Prairie Aquifer, from which the city of Spokane gets its water. Up here, water is scarce. It's underground in our own little aquifer around 120 square miles. Thousands of residents depend on water from 1,400 private wells that tap into this aquifer. Unlike people on regulated, carefully monitored city water systems, no government agency protects these wells. We are on our own. People sitting up on top of, of the, and drinking water from the, the West Plains is that they, they encounter that sand and gravel. So they'll go through a couple different layers of basalt, and then in that basalt there's these incised portions of, of sand and gravel what we call paleo channels in the West Plains. Some wells are gonna be shorter that go to a one basalt flow, one aquifer, and others would be deeper that go to a different aquifer, and some might even be in some of that paleo channel deposit. Um, and so different wells access different aquifers, and then those different aquifers are actually polluted or contaminated in different ways as well. So it depends on where you are from the source and the fl groundwater flow path um, if your well would be contaminated. On top of that, we also have a huge amount of erosion from the Missoula floods that gives you very isolated channels um, that allow water to go a lot faster and, and be communicated to different locations. 
1967, a fire killed 134 sailors on an aircraft carrier off the coast of Vietnam. The U.S. Navy searched for a solution, something to quickly extinguish even the hottest jet fuel fires. The 3M company answered with a new product that surpassed all expectations, aqueous film-forming foam. The foam's magic ingredients were a new family of synthetic chemicals called per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS, P-F-A-S. Fireproof, waterproof, indestructible, with an endless storage life, PFAS seemed perfect for the task. 3M's ads even said the foam was biodegradable, low in toxicity, and harmless to animals. PFAS chemicals began to be used in hundreds of products beyond firefighting foam. They became nonstick cookware, waterproof clothing, carpets, packaging, even cosmetics. But the PFAS manufacturers actually knew from the beginning that these chemicals are not harmless. In fact, they are incredibly toxic, many times more toxic than well-known poisons like arsenic and DDT. They just don't kill right away. They cause diseases that take time to show up. Cancer, liver disease, heart disease, pregnancy complications, thyroid disorders, infertility, and many others. Now, 3M and DuPont are facing huge class action lawsuits. Most state governments are suing as well, with claims expected in the hundreds of billions of dollars. As the chemical companies knew long ago, the health effects of ingesting PFAS are profound. PFAS has been known in this area for a number of years. I became aware of it when I was the local health officer back in 2017, 2018. There's thousands of PFAS, you know, so we use this as sort of a generic term for 14,000 different chemicals that are just minorly changed. And as you now know, they're called the forever chemicals because they break down very slowly in a lifetime, if not longer. People are exposed to those substances and it can be, again, one time, it can be a hundred times, it can be a thousand times. Commonly, people are exposed to them through drinking water. We talk about PFAS bioaccumulating. It means it doesn't go away. I mean, it's, it breaks down or it's excreted by the body. The longer your body is exposed to a toxin, the greater the likelihood that you will have an adverse outcome. A friend of mine that lives uh north of me uh, was in the Fairchild testing area and his well tested positive for PFAS chemicals and so I started to pay more attention to everything that I heard. I learned that there was a blood test available for PFAS levels in your blood. They tested for 16 PFAS chemicals. I tested higher than the national average on six of those 16 chemicals. And for me to have higher than the national average levels of those two chemicals pretty much convinces me that I have been subjected to firefighting foam chemicals in my well water. PFAS, as well as many other chemicals, are what are called endocrine disruptors. So they disrupt the endocrine system. This system produces hormones. And hormones work in very small quantities to create big effects. So where some of the science shows it to be an endocrine disruptor is in the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a small gland in your throat and it's involved with metabolism. And if it is not functioning properly, it can affect metabolism, which affects everything that we do. And we've seen again with PFAS exposure that people's cholesterol levels have been impacted. And the thought is that it is impacting the liver. I have cholesterol of 318. I practice yoga daily. I'm a vegetarian. Why do I have 318 cholesterol? We're concerned about fetal development. There seems to be impacts on fetal development and infant development. If I look at adults, then we're seeing that there seems to be fairly strong associations between people and kidney cancer, renal cancer, and testicular cancer. 
Didn't find out about it until six months after my husband passed away. He had a gallbladder issue, and through his surgery and gall for his gallbladders when they found um, stage four terminal pancreatic cancer. Went to the oncologist, and the oncologist gave us about 90 days, and he lived 67 days. Six months after my husband passed away, I received a letter in the mail that said the Air Force wanted to come and test my water. In 2015, a career firefighter at Seattle's SeaTac Airport died of cancer, becoming the first proven occupational PFAS death in Washington. Those SeaTac firefighters trained only twice a year, but at Fairchild Air Force Base, it was two or three times a month for more than 40 years. For decades now, both military bases and civilian airports have been required by federal law to perform frequent fire drills with huge volumes of firefighting foam, sometimes filling whole hangars with foams, covering whole runways. After the training, the foam is simply rinsed away, away from the runway, off the trucks, out of the hangars, and into the sandy ground of Spokane's West Plains. Yeah, my brother and I were demolition contractors. We did a lot of work at Fairchild, and that was one of the main reasons we moved to our location. We've never drank the water. We cooked with it, but we never drank it. And that was on the advice of both my father and my wife's father, who were both in the military, both stationed at Fairchild at one point in time. They both said that there's a lot of nasties that were dumped off the end of the runway for years and years and years when they were in the service. Ever since my parents moved out here in 1939, there's been livestock on the farm here, uh, cows specifically. Last May, we did a well test here on the farm. It came back positive. Uh, we're upwards of close to 300 parts per trillion. We're the safe level for Washington State is 10 to 15 parts per trillion of PFOS and PFOA in the water. We immediately switched to bottled water uh, and have since uh, installed a, a system, but that does nothing for the out, outside. Uh, the grass, the livestock, the pets. There's a large area of property on the West Plains that is affected. It's farmland. It's rural traditional. People here have cows. My neighbors have beautiful horses. Chickens and pigs and goats and llamas and they all drink the water. My neighbors grow beautiful gardens and give me peppers and corn and being a vegetarian I can't wait every year to have all this wonderful fruit. They water their gardens with this water. A fellow down the road sold his place and I said oh you're leaving? He goes yes he said because of the water situation. I says well do you have the he says no I don't trust it coming down to my house. So I'm selling it and getting out before I have a problem. So that's my biggest problem. You know, will it, will it put my cost of my land down a lot? Or will I be able to sell it? I think the property overall in the whole canyon, in the whole area, I think, uh, yeah, it definitely affects the property value. I, you know, and I've heard neighbors talk about it. If I wanted to sell, especially if a family wants to move out here with children, would they want to trust the filter system when this could cause severe medical problems? It worries me a lot because I think that if we were, we were to ever try to sell, that would have to be something that would have to be upfront right away to someone who's going to buy it. They would have to be willing to buy their own water or take a chance and drink it. I mean, but they would have to know before we could sell this property. There's nothing in any requirements for the U.S. Department of Agriculture today that even recognizes PFOS, PFOA as a situation on, on farms to have to disclose it. In 2017, Fairchild admitted its PFAS contamination of wells that supply the city of Airway Heights. It launched a program to test nearby homeowner wells and has now installed around 100 whole house filter systems in toxic wells it discovered. But there has been no help outside that nearby area that Fairchild chose to test. 
Fairchild Air Force Base um, sort of put a boundary to what they considered their contamination at Hayford Road, and that goes along with one of these old paleo channels. Unfortunately, when we started looking at the three-dimensionality of the, the paleo channels, uh, just north of there is actually a, like an old waterfall. As Missoula floods came through, it scoured out a big hole in the basalt. Um, so that's actually a, a place where your groundwater from the surface can actually communicate with lower aquifers as well. And we do find con contamination in the lower aquifers to the east of, of that Hayford Road as well. Our concerns grew last year when the State Department of Ecology found Spokane International Airport responsible for PFAS contamination in its groundwater. The Environmental Protection Agency has begun working with state and local agencies to address private well concerns across more of the West Plains. But the Fairchild cleanup hasn't even started, and the Spokane Airport investigation is barely underway. Neighbors and governments are now paying very close attention. Companies have known about the toxicity of PFAS. The federal government should be more proactive in ensuring that these substances are not released into the community and into the environment. I would like to see the airport and the Air Force treat this like a community problem instead of like an engineering issue. What are we supposed to do? Living out in the country, you have to have water. You know, a lot of people have horses and livestock. What are they supposed to do? The more people talk to the regulators, the more people talk to their representatives, the more people talk to everybody around them, the more knowledge there is and the, the more need is communicated, the, the more help you'll get. And it's definitely happening in the West Plains. The heartache that I hear from the people who uh, were brave enough to stand up and, and talk about it. That was amazing, and it, it let me know that I'm not alone. People like the West Plains Water Coalition, uh, Friends of the Palisades, putting in public records requests or FOIA requests, emailing and, and contacting their representatives has made a difference. It's huge. We have a long way to go in this quest for safe, clean water. There is much left to do. I hope you'll join us. For the West Plains Water Coalition, I'm John Hancock.